when God decides to go on strike. The story is introduced to us in the 13th chapter of Judges. It says that in the land of Zorah, there was a man named Manoah. Manoah's wife had not been blessed at this time to bear a child. For she had not been privileged to mother a child into this world. Her womb at this point was barren. But the angel of the Lord came unto Manoah's wife and said to her that a child would be born whose life would be ordained to the life of Nazaretism. Sure enough, as the angel had said, in the due course of time, Manoah's wife was blessed to bear a son. And because of the baby's bright countenance, They named him Samson, which means a bit of sunshine. Samson is the only judge in the realm of Israelic history that did not take a system or organize an army against his enemy. Nowhere in the Bible will you find where Samson organized anybody for a strategy session against the enemy. But rather, everything Samson did by way of defending Israel against the enemy. He did it on his own. And he did it single-handed. You understand? Strong was Samson. According to the Bible, Samson went down to a town called Timnath. When he got down to Timnath, the Bible says he arranged a feast that was to last for seven days. When the feast started, they invited 30 Philistines to come in and party with them. And on the third day, when the life of the party began to die down, Samson made a wager or a bet with the people who were there. Said to them, if you solve the mystery of my riddle, then I will go out and give you all 30 sheets and will give you 30 change of garments. They accepted the bet. And Samson said, if you don't do it, then you are to give me 30 sheets and 30 change of garments. They asked Samson for the bet and to give them the riddle. Samson said, the riddle is out of the eater came forth meat, and out of the strong came forth sweets. For three more days they pondered and wondered. What was the meaning of this unusual riddle? And 
when they were unable to figure the wisdom of it out, they got to Samson's wife, propositioned her to make Samson tell her. And then you, baby, tell us. And if you don't do it, we're going to kill your father and your mother. The girl went and begged Samson to tell her the meaning of that riddle, and Samson told her. She went back and told the 30 Philistines. And on the seventh day of the feast, Samson asked them if they had solved the mysteries of his riddle. Out of the eater came forth meat, and out of the strong came forth sweets. And they answered him back and said, what is sweeter than honey? And what is stronger than a lion? Samson said, if you had not plowed with this heifer of mine, if you had not messed with this woman of mine, never would you have unraveled the mystery of my riddle. Samson got angry. He went down to Ashkelon, slew 30 Philistines, stripped them of their garments and spoils, brought them back to Timnit, and paid the 30 men the wager or the bet that he had lost. Strong was Samson. And then Samson went back to his supposingly to be wife's house. And her father had given her to another man. This naturally made him more infuriated. He got mad and went to the Philistines' cornfield. Caught him 300 foxes and then tied their tails together. Put a torch between that tail. Set their tails on fire and ran them out across the Philistines' cornfield and burned up their ripened grains of harvest. Strong was Samson. The Bible goes on and tells about how Samson messed up a number of Philistines' five and hit And they got angry with him. They thereby went down to Judah where Samson was hiding. The Bible said it was 3,000 of them and demanded that Samson would be released into their custody. Samson gave himself up they bound him in chains and was carrying him back to the city of Ashkelon. But on their way, they came to a place called Lehi. And there the spirit of the Lord was upon him. He broke the chains like they were feathers and found a moss bone in the fullness of his strength. The Bible calls the jawbone of an ass. And with that jawbone, he slew 1,000 Philistines, fell one by one down at 
at Samson's feet. Strong was Samson. Samson left Lehi and went on down to the city of Gaza. Laid that night with a harlot, which is nothing but a whore. Laid there with her all night long. And when the Philistines heard that Samson was in town, they surrounded that house and waited till morning for him to come out and attack him. But Samson somehow or another woke up. The Bible says at midnight and walked out and saw the Philistine soldier around the house. But for some reason, in the stillness of the night, they had fallen asleep. Samson tiptoed around and got to the gates of Gaza. And the gates were locked. But the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. And with Samson's bare hand, he uprooted that gate, slung the gate, the bar and all, on the back of his shoulder, carried him up a hill about a quarter of a mile and set him down in the land of Hebron. Strong was Samson. And naturally being strong and giving the Philistines hell like he was giving them. The Philistines organized themselves and went out on an all-out campaign to find out the source of Samson's strength. Oh, Salem, how applicable is this gesture on the part of the Philistines similar to so many in our lives? But you know when you're doing well, when you're living good, when you're making your ends meet, when you're not bothering and begging nobody for anything, people wonder about you. And they want to know the source of your strength. I'm right today, y'all. Want to know the source of your strength. You know, sometimes people see an ugly woman, and that ugly woman got a good looking husband. And they'll get around and gossip. Child, I wonder what that handsome man walk with that ugly woman. What they're really asking is, I wonder from whence does the source of her strength come? You say she's certainly not keeping him with beauty. So she got to be keeping with something else. Y'all know about what that is. of your strength. So now these Philistines, you understand, heard about Samson going with a woman down in Sorak by the name of Delilah. Delilah being a Philistine as they were, they approached her with a proposition. They said to her, Delilah, we understand yeah. that Samson
Jackson is your man. But we want to know the source of his strength. We want you to find out for us how we can bind him. How we can afflict him. How can we make him weak? And if you do this for us, Delilah, we will give you 1,100 pieces of silver. No here, not the Philistines did not want to know the source of Samson's strength so that they could be strong. Uh -uh. That wasn't the reason. And you know, that's the way a lot of people are. They don't want to know why you're strong so that they can be strong like you. But they want to know how you're strong so they can make you weak like them. You understand? That's why the Philistines wanted to know where his strength was coming from so that Samson could be weak as they were weak. Then that's not the only reason why they wanted to get him. But one of the main reasons why they wanted to get him was because Samson was just doing too much. Yeah, he had slain 30 men in Ashkelon. He had taken the job on the ass yeah. and killed a thousand Philistines. He had picked up the gates of Gaza. Yeah. And they were envious and jealous of him because he had just done too much. Oh, Salem, I come to tell you, in your lives, you got to be careful. When you start doing too much. When I stop this morning and look around at our church, see how the Lord is blessing us. Don't you fool yourself. There are a lot of people in this city don't like it because we are doing as well as we are. Simply because we are doing too much. When they hear about the terrific crowds that we carry Sunday after Sunday, we're doing too much. When they pass by and see the policemen out there directing traffic, they can't stand that, some of them. Because you're doing too much. When they hear about us tithing, when the word get around that we're not begging, we're not selling fish and frying chicken, raffling and ticketing, and yet that church has to do that. When they hear about us, they don't like that. Because we're doing too much. You don't hear me. So now they wanted to catch that. Because he was just doing a little bit too much. I heard the Lila say, I'll do it for you. And when she got with Samson, yeah. I heard her say, darling, yeah. tell me, your sweetheart, yeah. where does thy strength lie? Yeah. And Samson started teasing with her. Yeah. <laughs> and said, well, baby, I tell you what, if you were to get seven weeds yeah. and bind my hand, 
weeds that have never been dry. Yeah. If I were bound with them, yeah. I'd be as weak yeah. as any other man. Yeah. The Philistine sneaked Delilah yeah. seven dried weeds yeah. bound his hand. Yeah. And she said, Samson, the Philistines yeah. are upon thee. Yeah. But Samson jumped up shook himself and those weeds popped off like they were nothing but threads. The Lord said, now nah, baby, you, 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 you teasing with me. You, you, you ain't doing nothing but mocking me. Tell me, Samson, if you love me, uh, the secret of thy strength. Samson started teasing again and said, well, now, honey, I'll tell you. If you were to gather in some new ropes that have never been used, the Bible says, occupy. And I would bound with the ropes. I would be as weak.